Dom. Adam. Once again, here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, it's another episode of the show that never stops. Two Detroit nerds back at it again. You already know what it is. We don't need to say. Yeah. We don't need to say this. They see our faces. They know the deal, bro. They already know. know. Um, Congratulations to us. Yes. Nobody knows yet. (laughs) A few people might know, but many don't. Many don't. Many don't. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been uh, featured in the top 30 art podcasts of of Michigan. Uh, We were number 14. Through Feedspot. Feedspot. Shouts out to Feedspot. Shouts out to y'all. Y'all already know what it is. You know, we just we just do our thing and we get noticed. It just is what it is. It's always been that way. It has. You know, it's not even something we can control anymore. No. Why should we? Yeah. Let it be what it is, you know? I know. But uh it's been a little while, Dom. Let's uh let's pick it up where we left <laughs> off. <laughs> What's up? The show that never stops. It's been a little while. <laughs> Yo, y'all already know, guys. Y'all already know. Yeah, hell yeah. Let's kick things off, bro. Yeah, man. Let's pick it up. You know, let's go back to basics. Go back to the beginning. You know, yeah. We started the show talking about anime, video games, and really anything cool that cool people talk about. (laughs) So I think we should kind of take it back to that level. Yeah. Bring it back to those days. That's what got us here, bro. Yeah. And we did something interesting, uh, and I think this was a great idea. We traded animes at the top of the week. We said, I'm going to watch some episodes of your animes. You're going to watch a couple episodes of mine. And then we're going to reconvene on Thursday and we're going to tell each other, you know, which animes suck and which animes are better. Yeah. Could you guys believe it? Two fucking nerds uh, knowing each other over half a year and we're finally doing this, <laughs> you know? It is what it is, guys. You know, some some of us just love quality and some of us, you know. Whoa. What, what are the other some of us? Some like? of us, you know, they just... They're, they just like the, they like what comes on Crunchyroll, and it's okay. You know, it's okay. We 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 forgive those people. Guys, you, know? you can't see the other side of the camera right now, but I'm looking at Adam's Xbox on his TV screen, and the second app that was opened <laughs> was Crunchyroll. So he must be talking about himself with that second one, and me with the quality. <laughs> but let me let me uh, let me just start by talking about the anime that you told me to watch, which yeah. is Basilisk. And man, thank you for showing me that one because number one, you know we talk a lot about like older animes and a lot of times we're talking about stuff from the nineties, but the two thousands hit a little different. It did. It hits a little different because it's right in that in between, between like, you know, some, some 90 stuff, even stuff from like 98, it can look a little dated, Mm -hmm. you know, but it still has that color and that grittiness that, to me is extremely nostalgic yes but sometimes it's hard to get into because it's just a little dated yeah. you know but stuff from like oh four oh five it's perfect and on yeah honestly i gotta say the art style of basilisk is my favorite it's my favorite art style i've seen from any anime that you've shown me i absolutely love watching it oh. it's beautiful um but in that same token There's another thing that I remembered about those types of anime, especially mature rated animes from that time, is that they loved drawing ugly characters. Like they love. They do. They they you you know what I mean? Yes. Like there's a lot of those animes from like the early 2000s that like grotesque, you know, Mm -hmm. characters and character design was like a feature of the shows. And I would say Basilisk has like the most of that of anything I've ever seen. (laughs) There's I appreciate so many, it though. So many ugly ass niggas. In there that show. are. There's. There is definitely a lot, especially on the. Um, it's the Koga and the. Uh, it's. It almost rhymes. It's like Koga and Oga or. Yeah. Ko- it's, yeah. It's something like Ogin. No, no, no. Ogin's the name of the girl. It's Koga and something else. I forgot the name of the other clan, but it's the one clan that has like all the ugly guys. Ugly. And then all the other dudes like normal for the time period <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like not like the the first dude you get introduced to the spider yeah. looking dude yeah like what the fuck is this and man? then there's a nigga with a scrotum on his on yeah. his chin i hated that dude i was like get him off the screen oh trust me bro they like i always like to see where they're gonna play the part of the introduction of certain characters that they know by detailing and, and making like yeah. are gonna make people feel that way like oh yeah. right, this is a face i want to punch yeah somebody whose head i want to see get lopped off so <laughs> yeah. I, I always like to see at least how long they're gonna last in the story or where they're gonna end up just just to see if they fulfill that out yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. see if that was done intentionally yeah. or if that's just the actual image of the character they had in their mind yeah and i and i want to talk about fight scenes mm-hmm. because i think 
a lot of newer animes, they skip the part that I think is the most important that other animes, like earlier animes, Mm -hmm. really did a good job of, which is before the, you know, skill levels are established, Mm -hmm. before you really know who's powerful or not, it's important to have a couple of scenes where you just see people fighting so you can really understand like what the stakes are Yes, in this world, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think so few, um, because I feel like newer animes, because they're such high budgets and they need to show you immediately something exciting. Yeah. They're so quick to show you like a big power move mm-hmm. or a big event, yeah. you know, but they don't really show a lot of scrapping. Mm-mm. Basilisk shows a lot of scrapping. They do, they do. Like a lot of just swords out like, hey, we'll see what happens in a couple seconds. And you're not really sure yet, you know, who because I'm only five episodes in. Yeah. You're not really sure who's the strongest quite yet. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And there's, there's that. I love that's one thing I liked about it a lot, too, is that element of surprise because like you said about it being high stakes, you know, within each fight, you really get to see that there's not really a gap for somebody who's maybe a little bit faster or a little bit stronger, has a better technique to just win. Like whoever's going to win for whatever reason it is will. So it's like at any time a fight comes up on the screen, which another point I want to make, I think there's a fight every single episode or multiple Uh fights every single episode. Uh And this is a case where I'm okay with that. Sometimes some, like some stories are kind of like, drawn out by doing that it's yeah. like it kind of ruins the actual plot because it's like oh you guys just wanted to show us a fight every right but right this is literally the plot of the show yeah and it works so well for it dude and normally because when i first started watching it i was like ready to text you like ah oh, man samurai anime mm-hmm. oh not I really know. you know that's what i said i thought the same exact thing not really my favorite subgenre. it's a little it's a little dated for mm-hmm. me it's a little slow but this show ain't slow. Good. And people really have to watch themselves in the show because yeah. I was well, immediately what I noticed from episode one was that the stakes and the ability for characters to die is mm-hmm. immediately established that like whoever you think is going to live may not make the, make it through this show. And that is it's almost like a Game of Thrones thing. Yes. You know, Game of Thrones did that in the first episode where the person who you thought was going to be like the main Mm -hmm. guy or like the hero gets his head chopped off. Right. And Basilisk gave me that feeling. Yeah. It's like like that, bro. Definitely. They, they just keep you guessing in in such a good way though. It's not a, I mean, this is obviously a lot different than game of Thrones. This is 24 episodes. So, you know, like you're only going to build so much of a connection with some of these characters Mm -hmm. to where Mm -hmm. it'll actually make you feel something like game of Thrones actually did. We're talking about game of Thrones has five seasons, six six seasons. Six seasons. Yeah, exactly. So they gave you the time to really let it like marinate within like, Oh, I love this guy. And then who knows when he's going to still be alive Uh or not. But this, you kind of know as soon as that fight starts, that music starts playing on one of these guys are dead. now. Somebody's about to get it. Yeah. And I, and I think like the fatalism of that show, is like so powerful. Mm-hmm. I, I really appreciated how quickly that show went to, you know, death scenes. Yeah. Like, you know, because I, I don't know how many animes you see where people that start in the first episode don't make it out of the first episode. Yeah. You know, I thought that was a very risky thing to do and it really made me pay attention to yeah. the rest of the shows. Like, yes. Oh, these are, they're high stakes. Oh, yeah. Here. They set the tone. Set the tone. One. Yeah. yeah. Episode one. <laughs> you want to know what this is about? We will show you today. Yeah. No, that was a great recommendation, man. I good. really appreciate well, it. Well, I can't one. wait for you to finish it then because it's, it, to me, it stayed good throughout the whole show. And you, obviously, you know, you get to see other things you haven't seen yet, like mm-hmm. other characters' abilities, how they fight. And again, they, they do such a good job at like, giving you exactly what's needed within that 24 episode span it's Mm -hmm. like to me they don't leave nothing out like anything i would have had a question about is is given yeah so i think i think you'll definitely enjoy that yeah no i'm excited for it and it does seem like a tight story it does Mm -hmm. seem like a story that has intention there's something it wants to tell you Mm -hmm. you know and on that note i have to turn it over to you yeah because you saw a very special anime to me i did and let me not let my opinion of what I've seen already sound bad you or haven't seen or, anything or like this. You I, haven't, you haven't, I haven't. You're right. Um, for those of you that don't know, I started my journey on Neon Genesis Evangelion. Yeah, Adam's yes. one of one, one of all. Yes. The the only thing that needs to be anime in yes. his mind, you know. Yes. Um, this obviously has a much different pace than the show I recommended for you. So, like I said, I'm only about three episodes in so far. I, de- I definitely like one of the things you told me to watch out for, and that was like color schemes and shading. Yes, amazing, amazing. It, because you a lot of these a lot of these times when you watch an anime, you don't think a lot of like 
color palettes are gonna fit together well and like like be able to showcase everything you're seeing in that scene. Mm-hmm. I'm only three three episodes in. I might be a little early to call it, but they're almost at that perfect mark already yeah. from what I've seen. Yeah. Um, all I've really gotten so far of anything that stuck with me is a little bit of character introduction. Okay. So, you know, you're getting to know who everybody is, mm-hmm. kind of, a little bit of their connection and relations so mm-hmm. far. Mm-hmm. Um, what, were not, your, what were your first impressions? Like first impressions, you see Shinji, you see Gendo, you see Katsuragi, you see Rei. <laughs> You know what? I I don't know if it's the setting that they're in or the obvious reason that is going to be said. It it reminded me of Code Geass a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I don't I don't know why people make that connection. Well, I think it's because Code the whole Geass, high school thing, high school, yeah. and then also Code Geass has that sort of apocalyptic mm-hmm. kind of feel to it. Yes. It's that global kind of yeah thing. Whereas I feel like a lot of animes focus on like whatever realm they're in. Mm-hmm. But I think Code Geass and Evangelion share the ability to kind of make it a global story. Yes, yes yeah. that makes sense. Early yeah. on, too, mm-hmm. which Very I like early, because, yeah. you know, that both of those shows, it could have opened up way later in the series. And I think still worked fine. But in in my opinion, it's better to get that out of the way right away. Yeah. Um, well, outside of that, um, I, I see. Here's the here's the difference. I recommended Basilisk to you and you mm-hmm. probably either only... T- very briefly heard of it probably haven't seen much of it yeah no i've never heard seen of it, yeah. so many things about evangelion <laughs> to where it's like it's not going to ruin my watch or my experience in any way right but i have an idea of what's to come not getting straight down into the details but as far as visuals go and what i'm going to be seeing happen on the screen yeah. i have an idea of what's to come but i'm excited for it yeah because, because i've already seen like yeah not not to shit on the show but if I'm watching what I'm watching right now, that would be boring to the average person. Mm-hmm. But I like it as much as I do because of, again, the color schemes, yeah. like h- how everything is. How's it going to be for me when we get into the shits? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what, that's what I'm super excited for yeah. for the rest of this watch. I can't wait to see that. And, so. and there is a whole, like, Evangelion. So I, I think of Evangelion as, like, if you visualize it as, like, a building, right? So, like, on the first couple of levels, it's a typical giant robot you know monster of the week kind of show right then you're going to like the ground floor and then there's like the sort of intrigue of the interpersonal Mm -hmm. character relationships then you go into the basement and then there's like this uh religious subtext it's like something beating at the door (laughs) in the basement (laughs) then there's like yeah then there's like this religious subtext and i don't know if you noticed dom but in the beginning of the show, in the opening credits, there are these things ah, that flash. Hate me. Did you skip the opening credits, Dom? I think I did. All right, guys. Well, it's been a great episode. Like that. <sighs> Listen, Crunchyroll doesn't. It, <sighs> I gotta see. I gotta remember if they have. I. I'm just. I'm so used to doing that. I'll, I'll go. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I'll watch it. I gotta get myself out of that, bro. I've been just like so programmed on skipping intros because. Even of new shows, because a lot of the time it's like, you know, I, I, I pay attention too much to intros, and they give shit away in the intro. The, it doesn't get really give okay, anything okay, away. Okay, good. Yeah, good. it doesn't That's really... That's what I wanted to avoid. Yeah, no, and, and I see why you did that. But, no, Evangelion does a good job of not doing that. Good. Um, but Evangelion has so much symbolism and imagery, and I know a lot of people listening to this who might have watched Evangelion and be like, oh, what well, the symbolism means nothing. It, like, it's not, yeah, uh, yeah, you know, congruent yeah. to the show. Keep that in your head. Yeah, and, and you know what? Also, you're too dumb yeah. to understand why it's so important <laughs> and what it means. Until you've actually read the Dead Sea Scrolls in Hebrew, don't talk to me about why Evangelion doesn't make sense. I don't want to hear it anymore. But... um I like that take. Yeah, no, I mean, there's, it's, it's just, I, that I've, show, I've seen some forums, trust me, bro. Show, <laughs> I mean, there's people that have spent, I'm one of them, who spent 20 years, no, not days, oh, oh, oh. who've spent decades decoding Evangelion. Evangelion, and, and also, too, you know, I'm not a math guy, I'm not a science guy, I don't care about any of that stuff. No, that math, first of all, isn't even real. Like, it's all fake. The Unabomber said it. You know, in in his letters, he said, you know, mathematics is fake. Mm-hmm. We just make it up. It's just Europeans writing things so that yeah. they can look smart. But there's so much interesting, like, physics concepts in Evangelion that are, like, put into the show. You know how, like, in a lot of animes, um, 
they'll spend a lot of time like hunter x hunter is a good example yeah. of this they'll spend a lot of time explaining yeah their like, power system the power why system. it makes sense evangelion doesn't do that evangelion just says oh no they they were put into an infinite number space and that's why that uh entire facility disappeared and that's okay though because there's a lot of things that don't like hunter hunter obviously being the exception but a lot of things don't need this super high in-depth explanation of why it's this way it, it, it's, yeah. not real. it's not real it's not real we don't but, need to understand why you think it's real right but with evangelion right it's like infinite number space what is that that's that must be yeah. fake that's some Do something they touch on it bro type in Duroxy on on wikipedia type in infinite number space that's a hundred percent a real f- a physics okay. concept right. and the way evangelion like visualizes that like, oh, okay. if something could create an infinite number space mm-hmm. like what would that look like you know oh, yeah, okay okay and you know a lot of animes go for the big explosion yeah right? like course. the dragon ball z yeah. spirit bomb yeah. throws evangelions does it in a different like it's like there's no combustion mm-hmm. why would there be an explosion yeah you would just disappear there would just be a hole in the ground where you were you and wouldn't see it coming there would be no sound yeah you would just disappear and like that's there's something so much more powerful about this something so much more spookier not seeing something like that coming definitely adds the eeriness to it. It's yeah just, it's there it's there or it isn't and then what i want you to do with the rest of the show is like so you saw the first two angels right mm-hmm. start to notice what the angels start to do by like the fifth or sixth okay month. because you know it starts like i said as like this monster of the week kind yeah. of show like oh it's attacking tokyo mm-hmm. 3 it's almost like a godzilla yeah. type of thing right the angels stop fucking like fucking around like that like around soon yeah very quickly by fifth or sixth episode that's soon they're they're just like all right we're gonna try the big monster Mm -hmm. shit okay that didn't work now we're gonna start with a a mind virus that's also an angel right we can start with a computer virus too that could also be an angel we'll start with a shadow that could also be an angel like it like the angels are so resourceful in how they try to attack nerve hq that it really makes the show like, and also the the existential dread of yeah. being a pilot. That that every time you get like, it'd be one thing if every time Shinji got into the Evangelion, it was just some big monster yeah. every single time. Eventually, you get used to that. Yeah, not in Evangelion. Every time it's different. Every time. That kind of makes me feel like uh, that's where Attack on Titan drew some inspiration of its own show from, like. Because they, they tried to, like, paint that picture in Attack on Titan a little bit. It was mm-hmm. like, okay, we're just going to go out. We're going to keep fighting the Titans that we know about. Boom, mm-hmm. this is what it is. And then special Titans pop up. Yep. Special, and then a different yeah. one pops up. And, and then a different one pops and up. And then, and I'm not giving anything away. Good, good, good. But there are some Titans that kind of look like people. Yeah. That kind of look like they could just sort of blend in. Yeah. That's all I'll say nice. about Evangelion. Nice. Okay. That's all I'll say okay. about Evangelion, bro. I'm hype, bro. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad you took a, a second to check it out. And I'm glad you yeah. said that about the color scheme because I think, you know, one of the things that draws me to shows like Evangelion and Yu Yu Hakusho is that it's got this timeless aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Like the farther away I get from Evangelion, the more I appreciate it. Of course. You know, whereas there's certain animes that I still like, that I still, yeah. you know, think are great. Um, but they don't really hold that timeless quality. Mm -hmm. You know, Evangelion is so unique and so specific. Like, you know, like there's times where, especially back in the Tumblr days, where I may have seen like a frame Mm -hmm. of an anime and I knew it was Evangelion. Right away. Just without seeing the Evangelions, you know. It's forever imprinted on your mind. I got you. I got you. You know, it's, it's, you can't mistake it for anything else. Good. Well, then I'm, yeah, like I said, bro, I'm excited, man. And then I still got, you know, we might as well tell the people about the other two shows. Oh, yeah. Uh, my next show to watch after I get, I'm done with Evangelion is Escaflown. Mm-hmm. Is Escaflown or Escaflone? I call it Escaflown, okay. but I don't know. I've never heard anyone else talk yeah, about it, so yeah. I don't know if it's called Escaflone. Well, I'm excited for that because yeah, I remember a little while back, you showed me a couple of clips, and that was like hit dead in the center of my nostalgia factor. I was mm-hmm. like, dude. I was like the the way that this looks like I, mm-hmm. like if if I only seen that and knew nothing else I would know exactly which time period to point to for yeah yeah just off of how it was done man and it's just so it's so uh, disappointing to me that I feel like <laughs> new animes are not distinct like that they want they we're almost at a time where they can't be mm. at that time you know like I, like we always say it was still fresh it was new so you kind of had more of that creative freedom to do what you wanted whereas now it's like a lot of these uh new creators have to kind of go by 
what the people are saying, I, mm-hmm. I would say, because that, I, I feel like that's why a lot of the top ones out now, they kind of follow the same same thing. Like, what's so different outside of maybe an art style or the direction that the plot goes in? And then obviously, like, you really, really want to get into details, like character designs and enemies and power systems, all that. But it's almost like they have to follow that out of fear of. Right. Because what's, what's been really new that, is is that different N- new within the last five years i was like when i say different like yeah. outside of the the shonen stand. but you know what you know what's crazy too is like just from watching stuff like uh basilisk i think about newer animes and i'm like i don't know any one of them that have like that art style that just makes me immediately want to watch the show yes you know what i mean yes like basilisk has that kind of like heavy like black lines mm-hmm. and like dark darks and light lights that like make you really want to see more of it yeah and i feel like newer anime does not have that draw anymore or are we just getting no. old i don't no, know no i don't think it's that it's almost like in the older style it's like the 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 color patterns that they went with like i know it's gonna sound funny but like it's like it adds emotion to the show yes. in itself without having any dialogue or what you're seeing happen on screen just the color shading alone yes like in, in basil is my my first watch of it like Bro, I, I went. I felt so many different ways watching. I felt like not scared, like something was gonna happen to me, but like a mm-hmm. like a like a thrilling vibe mm-hmm. with the music and the way that everything is shaded. Yep. And then, dude starts scrapping, and now I'm getting hype. I'm like, oh my god, this fight scene's done perfectly. Like it, it's crazy. Then something sad happens. You feel it's like it's almost to me. It's almost more believable. Like yes. even though it's still a drawing, mm-hmm. you know, but there's something about it that just feels more real than newer anime. Yes, I don't know what that is. I don't know what quality specifically mm-hmm. makes it more emotionally impactful. Yeah, you know, than most new animes. I mean, I'm glad you brought that up because even with like the introduction to a lot of the characters' powers, as unrealistic as the majority, if not all of them, are, it, it gives you a, that kind of feeling like, oh, damn, you know. Mm-hmm dudes might have been scrapping like this back in the day right. obviously they weren't yeah. but it's, it's just the way that it's done they just do it so well so yeah. i i have a lot of respect for that show man i only see so many people talk about it no that shit was cool man yeah and and that that definitely was an anime that like after i stopped watching it i was thinking about it mm-hmm. whereas newer anime i'll watch and forget that i saw yeah. it yeah what oh, same, is bro. Yeah, I what? Have about 15 titles i could if i went and looked at a list i could tell you damn i watched that but i forgot I forget them. And, and and these old animes, I couldn't forget them if I no. tried. It's weird, bro. It's almost like a sense of hypnosis. It's yeah. like you're watching it and it's, you'll never forget this. Yeah. No, there's, oh, no. Something, there's something going on. But yeah, yeah no, I'm, I'm glad that we've been doing this and we're going to continue doing it yeah. for the show, guys. Yes, we are. This is how our anime segments are going to go now. We're going to trade shows. We're going to talk about them. And then you're going to tell us which are your favorites. Yes. So be sure to like and subscribe. Always. Moving into current events. Yes. Um, this has been needed for the two Detroit nerds to take to have their take on. Firstly, what is this? I what? was just about to ask you, what is that? I've never seen that before. Thanks, Riverside. I just don't understand. Like, what? What, what do we do? What do we yeah, do different like, than everybody else? Uh, anyways. Yeah. Um. So I don't listen to rap music anymore. Um. In fact, I never listen to rap music. I know when yeah. you guys have heard me talk about rap, I know some of you guys might have thought I was a rap fan, but actually I was just kidding. Yeah, he was um, trolling the whole time. Yeah, no, I've never heard rap music. I don't know what an 808 beat. I don't know yeah. what any of that stuff is. I hate rap. Never listened to it before. Um, but thankfully, since I haven't listened to it, um, I could just kind of watch some of these current events sort of as a bystander, mm-hmm. someone sitting in the audience and not participating. Yeah. And what I've come to realize from watching this Drake and... Kendrick Lamar beef is that there is a system that controls music that is genuinely involved with the summoning and worship of demonic entities that um, needs to be something that specifically black people do not participate in. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that, Dom? Um, I feel like for a while now it's been that, but it, it was done in such a fashion that it wasn't so easy to see or, or like point out, you know, cause they had their, they had their moments, they had their segments where it was like, you know, it's all about the rising of the black people, uplifting black people, teaching them how to do things right, all this. And then it like 
kind of went backwards. You would think it would have started bad and then ended there, mm-hmm. but it went in reverse. Have it you started with that and mm-hmm. then ended with sorry, but what the fuck we got today? Yeah, but have you heard that story? I don't know if it's true. It's like I actually like wrote half of a screenplay based mm-hmm. on this story uh, that I heard. And some of the people listening, this might be one of those things that they've heard a million times. But for some of you guys, you may have never heard this. There is a story that was like a blind item that was put on the internet that was a uh, record executive who's like super wealthy now, but he didn't say what his name was. And he said, before I got this wealthy and successful, I was like a typical A&R, like, you know, just intern or whatever at a major record label. Okay. And this was in the early 90s, like right as rap was beginning. And uh, a bunch of record executives invited a bunch of like sort of lower level um, managers to like a really nice party, Mm -hmm. sort of gathering conference sort of thing. And it was like way out in the middle of nowhere. It was at some big mansion. They all go over there and the they hand out a bunch of NDAs and they say, you know, before we even get into what we're going to get into, you need to sign this because we don't want it, this yeah, to leave this red room. flag number one already. Right. Um, and uh, everybody signed the NDAs. And then the guy tells the story where he says that they decided that we've got a really great opportunity here to make a lot of money. And here's how we're going to do it. We are going to change the messaging of rap. We are only going to sign gangster rap artists. Get rid of anybody on your rosters that's talking about consciousness Mm -hmm. or talking about, you know, uplifting people. That's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to get as many gangster rap artists out there so that we can influence as many black people as we can or just listeners of rap in general to commit crimes, and then what we're going to do on the back end is we're going to invest heavily in private prisons, mm-hmm. which also were becoming a thing at that yeah, same time yeah. in the early 90s. Um, this is like during the Clinton administration. And uh, some some of the people walked out. They said, this is disgusting. Why would yeah. you do something like that? And some of the people decided to stay. They said, tell me more. Mm-hmm. You know, what's going on here? Um, I think that story is true. I don't think that was a blind item that was fake. I think that these companies absolutely did that. And I think it was a two pronged approach. I think the intelligence community in the 1970s was trying to kneecap the black liberation movement. That was a domestic terror threat. And they just barely did it. See, we only hear the stories about the people that they caught, right? Fred Hampton, you know, uh, Malcolm X. These are the people that they got to assassinate, right? But we don't hear a lot of stories about the successful people. You see, there were a lot of these... Uh, <laughs> kind of makes you wonder why. Yeah, there were a lot of these uh, black liberation movement, movements, specifically in uh, Northern California, who uh, successfully robbed banks and left the country, successfully hijacked planes. We don't hear these stories. Successfully hijacked planes and landed them in fucking Cuba and, and were able to get out of the country. So this was a big problem for them. They just barely, by the skin of their teeth, neutralized that movement. Mm-hmm. So they said... We will never, ever let that happen again. We will never let a group of conscious black people or a society of conscious, educated black people who want to affect politics, Mm -hmm. right, to ever rise up in this country again. So they made a sort of, let's call it a satanic pact with the music industry. They said, we're starting these new things called private prisons. We're going to give you the majority shares in those prisons. You're going to get the biggest profit sharing. And what you're going to do in return is you're going to play this type of specific type of music. And that was a way to program the black populace in the inner cities to start to commit crimes, to start to to uh, lean into criminality rather than to lean out of it and Mm -hmm. try to get an education, move out of the cities to to promote criminality, to promote ignorance, to promote fatherness, fatherlessness, to Mm -hmm. destroy the black family. So that was sort of their project. They said, you're going to get rich and we're going to get to control this populace. And I think that's what rap is. I have no problem believing that. And the people that are at the top Mm -hmm. of this satanic pact, people like Drake, I believe. um, And and, and I'm going to say why. Because it's not enough to just say that, oh, Drake is bad and that's why I don't listen to rap. And I believe it. Right, right. Right, right. 
it's that everyone else knew. I don't believe that like someone like Kendrick Lamar, like we were saying uh, before the show started, I don't think Kendrick Lamar didn't know what Drake was up to. Mm -hmm. I think these are people not saying that Kendrick Lamar is also into that stuff. Yeah. But I think if you're going to participate, like, would you go to work with a guy, let's say at your grandpa's store, there was a guy that worked with you that, you know, did stuff to animals. And only I knew. Would you still work there? Would you still no. stand next to him? No. So that's what I'm Not talking about. That's what I'm talking about. These people all know all this sick shit. Of course. And they still participate in it. That's why I don't listen to rap anymore. No, no. That's actually, that's, of any take I've heard anybody say at any period of my life of why they don't listen to rap anymore, that's one of the better ones. And I, to an extent, I agree with that because it's like, if if you have this information, why aren't you doing the only right thing you could do with it? Yeah. And that's let it out. Yeah. You you guys want to be tough and, and talk about how, you know, you don't let, you know, whack shit happen around you or this, that, and the other. You, you ain't about that fuck shit. Why stop here? Yeah. What You were just, you know, a lot of these people, because they're both, you know, UMG, yeah. the, Drake and Kendrick Lamar. You don't think they were both at the same studio at the same time doing something at some point? You don't think they were on the same press tours? You don't think they, you know, cross paths? And like, why, why would you be involved in a system that aids and abeds someone like Drake? We had to, we had to say that about a lot of people, then. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a like systemic. It's, everyone. it's everyone. That's why you have to get yeah. rid of it, guys. Delete all the rap off your shit delete it get rid of it it's bad rap is over we need to stop and that doesn't mean that rap didn't have amazing artists and didn't have amazing music and wasn't an incredible movement but it's been hijacked it's no longer what you think it is it's a virus now no, it hasn't been for a long time we now that we're on the topic we're, we're probably gonna have to go back and look and do this with all form of music all forms yeah all well music probably needs to come to a cease we yeah, need to go I, for I do, about 10 years, no new music released. I do think we need to go back to Bach. I think we need to go back to Vivaldi. I think we need to go back to, you know, uh, piano concertos. We need mm -hmm. we need to go back to that for like... Lyricless 15, music? Lyricless music. We need to go back to just sounds for yeah. a while. And we need to cleanse ourselves. We need to just detox from all of this. And what really sealed the deal for me, the final nail in the coffin, was... I was watching on TikTok, there was this black guy that uh, said his heart stopped and he went to hell, mm -hmm. right? And he said, in one of the pits of hell, there's like a very specific fire pit in hell where you can hear music, you can hear demons singing. Yeah. And, he, and he walked over to the fire pit and he said that if you listen to some of the, like to the demons chorus singing, you know what they're singing? Rap. They're singing the same lyrics in in that in we hell, are up here that we are up here you know what it it would be the best way because we really break These down music love so so roll in the nova it's, it's the Raw keeps in rovers. come on no it, rap it, it makes sense if, if that's truly what he's seen and what it is down there because what rap or what form of music is more dependent on its lyrics Nothing besides rap. But it's incantations. It is incantations. I know. I'm just saying in terms of why it would be that that he heard. Yeah. What's Again, what's more dependent on lyrics than rap? It's nothing. Like, you can have other forms of music be okay without lyrics. But, Dom, we've been duped. Yeah. We've course, allowed this bro. into our minds. I've allowed this into my mind. We all have. I remember, I remember when What a Time to Be Alive came out. And I remember everybody around me changing. You too? Of course. I remember. Well, I'm glad I, I, did, I wasn't around it like that. I rem Well, I remember. Slow down. <laughs> I know what that well means. I know what that well means. What does it mean? What does Slow it down. Mean? Well, you're not one of the people I'm talking about because your music opinion is this. That's what that well means. <laughs> But uh, no, but I, I remember the hypnosis. It was a hypnosis. I remember when DS2 came out. There was something deeply hypnotic about it. I remember when Barter 6 came out. Do you remember when Barter 6 came out? I do. I hated it. 
so I think for those of us that were listening to that music at that time, um, I think that you can all agree with me in the fact that there was something that was going on. You were not the same when you were listening to that. Be honest with yourself. You were not the same. So we need to be honest about what this does to us as a community. And Toxic we need, animals activated. Yes. And we need to decide for ourselves if we want to continue. Because it's here's the thing. No demon can get inside of your body without implicitly asking you first. Yeah. It is, it is, demons are not more powerful than you. In fact, they're much weaker than you. The only thing they can do is suggest. That's it. That's all they can do. So just like a vampire cannot step into your home without asking you. It, hey, can I come in? Yeah, literally. No, no, no. If you, <laughs> I know, I know, if you I know. read Bram Stoker's Dracula, that's exactly <laughs> the, what happens. A, 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 a vampire cannot step into your property without asking you. Yeah, that's what this is, is that it is a hypnotic uh, programming, Mm -hmm. but it cannot be effective without your acceptance of it. Of course. So what I'm asking our our listeners is stop accepting it. They're not going to. I know. I know. I'm I'm probably never going to stop listening to rap. I'm too deep into it, bro. Sorry to tell you. You'll be all right. You know, I was talking to my sister about this earlier today and I was like, yeah, I, well, what did she say about that? I want to know that. Well, she's been off rap for a long time. Okay. The, I mean, she she really got uh, over that probably about, I mean, not super long, but like maybe three years ago. Okay. Um, but one of the things I was saying to her was that at this point, it would be a hundred percent my fault if 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 I woke up in 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 the you know sixth layer of hell screaming and yeah. getting my teeth gnashed, I would have to just accept that yeah, I decided to, to be yeah. yeah. Because they've shown you now, they've sh- Drake has shown you now who he is. So if you continue to listen to him, that's your choice. You are allowing the vampire to step into your house. Vampire talk. Uh, I never want to hear you you mention or play uh, Playboy Cardi around me again either. I think Playboy Ever. Cardi. No, 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 no. See you guys. I See think, you guys. I Here think, it comes. I think Playboy Cardi was one of those who he tried his hardest. He really tried. <laughs> But he was taken as well because this is this is the Leviathan. Hold on, hold on, tell him tell him what he tried his hardest at. He tried to bring light to us, ladies and gentlemen. He tried Playboy. Playboy really tried. If you listen to Broke Boy and you can hear the chords of Broke Boy, it makes you want to give to your brother. It makes you want to build. It makes you want to create cities and create dams and, and create irrigation for crops. You know that's what Broke Boy makes you want to do. But like when you listen to newer Playboy Cardi, it's it's uh, it's you know it's sedative, it's sedative, you know, it's hypnotic and in, in, makes in you just want to kick back. Yeah, and get a double cup. Exactly, couple a couple of zannies. Mm-hmm. It makes you want to kill yourself. That's Literally. that's really what it, what that is. Is is it's, it's uh, slow death music, and um, we have to accept it for what it is. And I know it's hard, guys, because. So much of a lot of our personalities are wrapped within rap music. You know, rap yeah. music is such a masculine expression, right? So for a lot of men, it's a good way to sort of exercise your masculinity mm-hmm. or or celebrate it, yeah. really, right? And I think it's hard for a lot of people to part ways with that. Because they didn't have, you know, that, that wasn't around for such a long time as opposed to uh, every other genre of music. All other genres had a form of that around mm-hmm. for a long time. Mm-hmm. Whereas rap, if I'm not mistaken, rap would be out of the main genres, not getting into subgenres would be their newest one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Well, I think rap had, has has a uniquely empowering effect mm-hmm. to it. Right. But we have to recognize that the rap that exists today is not designed to empower you. It's meant to empower Ball and Baphomet and Beelzebub and Cerberus. And, and Drake's uh, Rich Baby Daddy, Lucian. And Lucian, these this is not meant for you. This is the music that they are using to extract and harvest your your spirit energy, and use it for themselves. So we have to get real here. And 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 this is the this is what I'm really going to say to all the real niggas listening. I know there's you know, you know there's some people that may not be yeah. in this category, but for all my real niggas listening, especially for all my real East Coast niggas, hey, Maryland, stand up for all y'all. Are you really going to let some Canadian? Some 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 mulatto take your energy. Chill. Is that what you're gonna do? I mean, the choice is yours. The West Coast already showed they're not letting that happen. 
Exactly. They've made their decision. Yeah. Where do you stand? I don't know. A lot of Toronto made their decision too. I seen that fucking hilarious <laughs> video actually, bro, of this guy. His name is uh he's a YouTuber. His name is uh I think Steezy Kane is the guy's name. If I'm not from, I didn't really do too much exploring of his page, but from what I was reading in the comments of this specific video of his I watch, which I'm going to tell you about, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people said like his page is dedicated to like, he he will go into like certain areas, not bad areas, but like certain areas and play a certain kind of music in his headphones and walk around the streets of the public dancing to it, singing it out loud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he went to Toronto. Yeah. It was playing the the last Kendrick Lamar diss track that came out. They not like us. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it is easily one of the funniest videos I've watched Send in my that. life. Dude, it is. <laughs> he literally walks around like random spots, just dancing, singing out loud. He's got his fucking Apple headphones on, the big mm -hmm. ones. And you just get to see the reactions of people around him. Like some people like step away from him. They get like nervous. <laughs> There's one point in the video where like after one of like the hard bars are dropped, he like wraps it and then takes the headphones off and breaks them right in the middle of the street. Dude, it's, it's fucking great, dude. I yeah. got to send it to you. You'll yeah. like it. It's send funny. Me that. But yeah, man, I, I think this, this revelation cannot be ignored is my point. We cannot just go back to being like, that was crazy. Well, anyways, what's the next mixtape? Like, no, no, no. Look at what you just found out. Yeah. Look at I it. I mean, bro, you and I have already, I'm not saying like, you know, we're excluded from this, but. You and I have already kind of had our opinion of Drake for a minute now, mm -hmm. but I but, but you're right, and the majority of people have the opposite opinion of him. Almost everybody I talk to, almost I, yeah. I have a good amount of friends that don't feel the way others do, but it's it's kind of scary. And when you really go back to look, like look at how long his run has been for. Can we really say any other artist in rap has had a run like that? It's artificial. It is. It is. Regard, yeah. Regardless of what it is, that that should speak something for itself because it always raises the question to me, like, do people really like this music that much? Because I right. can't see it. Right. No, I mean, here's the thing. I was the biggest Drake hater in high school. Mm -hmm. I did not like Drake at all. I thought he was completely corny. Um, I was like, why would I listen to a guy that I could probably like smack? No, not just smack, but like. I would probably like push him on the ground and he wouldn't get up for three months. You like he's hurt. one of those guys. Yeah. Oh, like, I skinned my elbow. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> like, you know, he's just, he's, he's frail. He was fragile back then. I know he's gotten a lot of plastic surgery and fake abs. And now he's like, yeah. you know, he has Harley Pasternak as his trainer who, you know, MK ultras and puts the fucking, you know, things on his eyes. So, you know, now he looks better, but he's still that same guy inside of that, you know, artificial frame. You know what I mean? He takes, <laughs> takes ocular doses of his medicine. Yeah, yeah. You know, like they're getting him straight through the eyeball, whatever they're putting in this shit. Oh my god! But dude. that's uh, nuts. You know, I I got fooled. I think sometime in college. So you're not talking about rap as a whole. You're talking about from a certain period to now. Yes. Okay, well, okay, okay. well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think it happened earlier than like it has started to affect me. It just wasn't me. as bad. Yeah. It just wasn't as bad. Yeah. And they hadn't gotten advanced enough. Yes. Like, you know how, um, you know how Twitter when it first came out mm -hmm. was like kind of janky. Yeah. And it wasn't like really fluid. Mm hmm. But how it is now, now it's like, how it's like perfect. You, like, yeah, how you'd want an app to work, it's perfect. It's perfect, right? I think that's what happened. Like, you know, Gen 1 of satanic rap wasn't that effective, no. right? It was effective, but it was really kind of localized. People were, people were smarter then, too, and they weren't yeah. as easily consumed yeah. by something like that. I genuinely believe that, too. Yeah. I, I think people were smarter back then. But I think as time went on, they started to perfect the model. And I think... Um, the sacrifices that they were making to to Baphomet at mm -hmm. that time, like I think the the first sacrifice was Tupac. Yeah. That or or who died first, Biggie or Tupac? Tupac died first. Yeah, Tupac and then Biggie. Those were the templates. Mm -hmm. They were like, this is what we do. We put we fill someone up with all of this collectivized energy, yeah. right? Imagine how many eyeballs were on on Tupac. How much attention oh, nuts. attention energy he was getting right mm -hmm. and then if you were able to sacrifice someone like that and then harvest all of that energy right imagine yeah. how much energy you were getting and, and that was then that's pre-internet right now now don't fast forward to internet age of rap where it's like you know it's not hard for the whole fucking world to know about this one person yeah like, take like an ex for example exactly maybe like i know he's not on the same level but like a pop smoke like a young Dolph. a lot of these guys in all these different areas that mean something to 
so many different spots on the world. Mm-hmm. Even 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 at the time of their passing, if you don't know about him because of the internet, you're gonna know everything about him then, right then and there. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, I think I think you guys were dropping know, like flies at one point. You know, I mean, Triple X Tentacion did say he was like, if anything happens to me, it's Drake. That was one of the last things he yeah. said. His final live stream, he knew he was going to die, and it was before he had picked up his money. Remember that fact. Yeah. Remember, people tell you, the police will tell you, oh, it was, an, it was an opportunity crime. They saw he had a bunch of cash in his Yeah, in that's his, what they, that's the major headline I always seen. But his live money stream, on him. his live stream, he was saying that they were going to kill him for days mm-hmm. before that happened. So what did he know? Yeah. What did he know? What had he found out about that industry that told him? that i'm marked they are gonna get me especially somebody with an image like his that would perfectly fit the narrative for everything you're talking about right now mm-hmm. this guy used to have the mm-hmm. the kind of all black contacts mm-hmm. and didn't he have a tattoo on his forehead mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. dude like when i first seen him come around dude looked like he was possessed by a demon yeah and they loved him they, yeah, that they was loved when, that that was when he got all his deals mm-hmm. that was when they were ingratiating him and then right before he died he started doing something that was very interesting he started doing this thing where he'd get on a live and he'd be like hey anybody listening to this live let's donate a bunch of money mm-hmm. to to a good cause yeah. let's use all of our collective eyeballs and all of our collective attention all the money you guys were going to give me for this live stream let's donate it mm-hmm. imagine if that had took off Imagine if that had become a trend, you know, like how the yeah. ice bucket challenge or whatever. That could have fucked the system up. Mm-hmm. Wait a second. You're telling me uh, people are donating to XXX Tentacion and now he's donating to people in Gaza? You know what I'm saying? They you can't know he have wouldn't that. have went with the, the charities and donations that they want they you to can't. donate towards. He would have done what he knew would have been needed where it was needed. I'm telling you guys, I mean, evil is so afraid of good that the preemptive strikes are years before good shows itself so when you see somebody like xx and tentacion and you're like he wasn't that great he beat up his girlfriend yeah. he did all this evil stuff yeah but evil the evil world knew that he was turning to good mm-hmm. and they knew how powerful he could be yeah and they had to kill him before he even got close to becoming good yeah i mean you it's just hard for somebody like me to believe that you know he, the way he was moving and going around for all this time that he became in the spotlight. Because we're, we're, I would say, like, back to the the look at me times. Now, I know he wasn't as publicly or within the media as most people would like to say. But look at me, you know, that shit blew up on SoundCloud. So he, like, to me, although, yeah, you're not number one on Apple Music. You're not number one on the radio charts. That doesn't mean you're not out there and already kind of famous. He He kind of already was. So... For a lot of his message and and the the substance of his music at that point, I don't know he was from a bad area of Miami, but you mean to tell me that whole time up until he started to change tunes, that's when something happens to him? Right. When he's on the end path of that, trying right. to trying to be better now, right. that's when somebody comes and guns him down. Now, if it's earlier in his career, hey, right. I'm not saying I want it to happen to him, but I understand it. Mm-hmm. He was involved with people or a lot of bad things that that's just a result of. Hey, it makes sense. I understand that, but. It's kind of hard to believe that at the point he was killed was when they decided to kill him, those two random guys. Yeah. I mean, I think, guys, if if you love black people, you'll stop listening to rap. That's what I'll say. If you lo- if you actually love, like, black people, you know, you'll stop this. This needs to stop. And and I think it was, it was hard. It's hard for me. I love rap. I still love rap. I still have it stuck in my head. There's songs I want to listen to right now. It's Mm -hmm. like quitting an addiction literally, but it has to stop because we have to get beyond this. We will be stuck in this perpetual loop. And this is the soundtrack to that loop that you see in the inner cities that you see in a lot of our communities. Mm -hmm. And we need, this is the problem now. And, And it's been identified. You know, so don't go backwards. Don't say, oh, no, that was just some weird shit that Drake was doing. No, it wasn't. That's the entire system. Drake just happens to be at the top of it. Yeah, I think, if it, like you said earlier off the camera, if the, if the number one is into right. this, into X, Y, Z, what are right. what are the people not so much in the spotlight, not so much looked for or sought after? Mm-hmm. It's fucked mm-hmm. up. It's real fucked up. So, yeah, guys, you know, in in, in, uh, in closing here. I'm, I'm going to ask everybody to do something very hard, which is don't listen to rap for a week 
and then listen to the next episode of our podcast coming out next Thursday. How about instead of listening to rap as often as you will, put our podcast on. Yeah, why don't you do that? We, we, have, got- a, we have enough out right now to where you could daily let it play for the, what, 10, 15-minute commute you have to work. You know, mm-hmm. get a little 10, 15-minute increment of our podcast out of the way on the way to work. Boom. Mm-hmm. You go on break somewhere. Boom. Pick up from there. On your way home, boom, pick that up. Listen to anime intros. Yeah. Listen to anime outros. Serve you a way better purpose. Seriously. You want you want to feel good? Listen to uh, the ending theme <laughs> song to Samurai Champloo. You, you, you want to feel good about yourself? Listen to that. Enough of this. Enough rap. That's the name of this episode. Enough with rap. You got to listen to uh, the Tokyo Ghoul intro. Tokyo Ghoul intro is actually... Known and regarded as like one of the greatest anime. I intros. think I have heard that. It's I, good. I can't really remember good. right now, but I did watch Tokyo Ghoul. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, yeah no, I've, I watched Tokyo. Yeah, Ghoul. yeah, yeah. Good. So, uh, yeah, guys, we're gonna we're gonna end it here because we're gonna do another episode on Tuesday yes. or on Saturday. On Saturday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. jumping the Shit. gun, my boy. I know. He's a week ahead, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another wonderful episode of Two Detroit Nerds. Make sure if you're watching this on YouTube that you hit that subscribe button. Um, yeah, this is really important for us. This is how we keep track of our metrics. So we haven't eaten in months, guys. You know, yeah. we need your we need your support with this. Just don't be an asshole. You know, we're we're trying to do the show. You know, just support. Right? Yeah, it's that easy. All right, guys.